What's up, Taiwan? I'm Ivan Yang with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Taiwan is considered one of the safest countries in the world, but the recent string of gun violence in its largest city is prompting a crackdown. Hame Kong reports. 50 bullets unloaded into a shop front in broad daylight in Taiwan's largest city. It's just the latest incident in a wave of gun crime in New Taipei. Another incident saw three men open fire on a temple. It's prompted the city's mayor, Ho Yoyi, to order a crackdown on organized crime. Taiwan has one of the lowest rates of gun violence in the world. Countries like Brazil, Mexico and the U.S. record tens of thousands of gun-related deaths annually. In Taiwan, it's well under 100. The recent string of gun violence is believed to be gang-related. The government says that police and local officials need to work harder to bring the problem under control. Although it remains one of the world's safest countries, Taiwan is no stranger to organized crime. Recent years have seen human trafficking schemes and allegations of underworld involvement in the country's politics. Taiwan is just under a year away from its presidential elections, so that means that everyday things like crime are under the spotlight now more than ever. Politicians from both sides will be looking to show that they're tough on criminals and that they can bring the recent surge in gun crime under control. Rick Yi and Jaime Okan for Taiwan Plus. A pioneering Taiwanese sculptor has died at the age of 85. Zhu Ming was found dead at his home in Taipei over the weekend. Police believe he committed suicide. Zhu Ming gained fame around the world for his works, most notably his depictions of human forms. They can be found in cities including Hong Kong, Montreal and Tel Aviv. A museum dedicated to his sculptures was opened in New Taipei in 1999. Taiwan has opened a new climate change agency to mark Earth Day. The new government body will oversee the country's response to the climate crisis and enact a climate law passed earlier this year. The law commits Taiwan to net zero carbon emissions by 2050. The office is also responsible for collecting a carbon fee from polluting industries, although the rate is still undecided. The Philippines and China have pledged to work together to resolve territorial disputes in the South China Sea. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and his foreign secretary met with Chinese Foreign Minister Qing Gang in Manila on Saturday. They agreed to establish lines of communication to help resolve maritime issues in the disputed area of the Western Pacific. It's the latest in a series of meetings between the Philippines and top officials from the United States and China. Just a handful of Taiwanese people have gone to fight in Ukraine. One of them, Zhuang Yuwei, is now sharing the skills he learned on Ukraine's front line with his fellow citizens. Rick Glauer reports. 52-year-old Zhuang Yuwei is at an air rifle range, keeping up his shooting skills. Now back in Taipei, the former tour guide spent eight months fighting against Russian forces in Ukraine. Now, we uh, now, Zhuang wants to pass on what he learned to his fellow Taiwanese. Like Ukraine, Taiwan faces an existential military threat. China sits just west of the island nation, claiming sovereignty over Taiwan and recently upping its intimidation. Chinese forces have recently held war games close to Taiwan and are increasingly sending military boats and planes into surrounding areas. In response, Taiwan has boosted defense spending and increased mandatory military service to one year. And Ukraine's civilian response has also inspired Taiwanese. As China ramps up its pressure on Taiwan and conflict becomes an ever more real possibility, a growing number of Taiwanese are coming to places like this one to learn the skills that could help them in the event of war. At this privately run National Defense Shooting and Education Center in the capital, Taipei, 
Zhuang shares his experience of war and teaches compatriots how to respond to attacks. Zhuang arrived in Ukraine during the battle for the country's capital, Kyiv, and the Ukrainian government paid him 400 euros a month to serve as part of the Foreign Legion. He says he saw Taiwan's own struggle in the Eastern European nation's fight against an authoritarian neighbor. For Zhuang, joining the fight in Ukraine was the right thing to do. And based on the lessons he learned there, he's now committed to preparing others back home in case Taiwan faces a similar fate. Ricky and Rick Lowert for Taiwan Plus. One of the biggest events on Taiwan's religious calendar is currently underway. The nine-day Dajia Mazu procession across central Taiwan regularly attracts tens of thousands of worshippers. But this year, the end of pandemic rules has drawn crowds so big that the parade is hours behind schedule. John Van Trieste reports. In Taiwan, nobody can attract crowds quite like the sea goddess Mazu, a popular protector in a country surrounded by ocean. Each year, mass religious processions in her honor crisscross the island. And this year, with pandemic rules lifted, they're back in a big way. On Sunday, devotees lined up early in the morning on day two of the famous Dajia Mazu procession. Their goal, to prostrate themselves beneath a statue of the goddess seated on a throne, praying for good fortune in the year ahead. This is the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic that this act of worship has been allowed. It wasn't long before the line grew to be a kilometer long, stopping the parade in its tracks for four hours. In the end, organizers had to turn the rest of the queue away. The 600-strong police force sent to maintain order also paid their respects. Monday is day three of the nine-day parade. The route takes worshippers on a loop stretching more than 300 kilometers through central Taiwan, stopping at a string of major temples along the way. Though not everyone who takes part completes the entire route, the organizer, Taizhong's Zhenlan Temple, estimates that millions of people join in at least part of the way. They hope for peace, protection and prosperity for another year. Yisen Chen and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. The number of black-faced spoonbills wintering in Taiwan has hit a record high. 4,228 of the migratory birds have been seen this winter. That's up 404 from the year before. The birds were much harder to track this year because drought conditions in the south of the country forced them to disperse over a wider area. Basketball star Jeremy Lin of the Kaohsiung Steelers scored a career-high and league record time 50 points on Sunday. Lin also nabbed 10 rebounds and 11 assists, giving him a triple-double. Although Lin fouled out in the fourth quarter, his team won against the new Taipei Kings 116-110. to Jeremy Lin was the only person of Taiwanese descent to play in the NBA in the U.S. He became a worldwide sensation in 2012 after his winning streak with the New York Knicks. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, we leave you with images of fiery orange poppies blooming in California's Antelope Valley. I'm Yvonne Yang. Take care and see you next time. <laughs>